Okay, my name is Matthew Kerrike and this is XLDM. <clears throat> I'm a PhD, PhD student at UWM and this is me streaming Dungeon Master Prep. But before I get started, I'm going to read the land acknowledgement. Okay. This guy, there we go. Okay. Um, we acknowledge that in Milwaukee we live and work on traditional Potawatomi, Ho Chunk, and Menominee homelands along the southwest shores of the Michigani, part of North America's largest system of freshwater lakes where the Milwaukee, Menominee, and Kinnikinnick rivers meet and the people of Wisconsin's sovereign Anishinaabe, Ho-Chunk, Menominee, Oneida, and Mohican nations remain proud. So, here we are, um, hopefully with IT issues fixed, ready to continue streaming Cool. Okay, so I've got um, a session tomorrow and another session on Tuesday, and I have some things to refine on my character sheet. So here, um, I've been looking at my travel Yahtzee game which combines Yahtzee, JavaScript, and, well, Yahtzee and JavaScript, and cheats to um, create a game, a meta game maybe, a mini game, uh, something which deals with the problem of travel. Um, because problem posing is what d and is all about. Players asking, can this be done? And you, as a dungeon master, finding your own way to have a legitimate answer, right? You need a way for yourself. If you're going to play the game, you need a way, like, what's legitimate for you now. Sliding scale different for different dungeon masters and for the same dungeon masters at different times, often different throughout the session, um, in which somebody asks you a question and you have to decide not only what the answer is but how that answer is true to you. You know, it could be that you rolled a big one, you know, rolling the, the dice from a table, random encounter, random item, random curse, um, those are, that's a legitimate way to find one. Now, of course, Dungeon Master might, you know, if they're good, they'll have a final filter, 
they'll be like, mm, I'm not going to let that in my game. Or maybe roll again for something worse or more drastic. Or it might just inspire them to come up with something. But the point is, is that there's a feeling in which, at least for me, I'm deferring to something. You know, um, for me, legitimacy as a dungeon master is about consistency. Because it's only in the consistency of your world, I think, that players feel like they have control over that world or that they feel powerful within that world. There has to be uh, ways by which players can put together the world. And, you know, I know there's a lot of sort of onus on dungeon masters just you know making up and going with it because ultimately the players will um, put it together themselves in a way that's compelling and that's fine but in terms of actually having the consistent answers to questions that refer to what systems within the world objective systems institutional systems which um, they're then going to be able to navigate um, because it makes sense to them, there's an order to it, uh, and that sort of literacy. I mean, for example, if you think about a board game. In fact, today I think I'm gonna uh, bring up Lords of War Deep. So, like, Lords of Waterdeep, you know, each player has, this is essentially their character sheet, but they keep their stuff. At the top, they have their agents, which is, like, their action economy, and the little blip, which is, um, I don't know about that. But the point is, is that you have a board which builds through the game to become a complex artifact, which can be read by the players. Who have built it together and although it is emergent from their individual um from them making meaning out of it and stuff the point is is that um the point is is that there is something to read you know that the the artifact they've created by the end of the game do we have a I don't think we have a thing of the, the board sort of in its late game, but you can imagine like a board of risk or, or, or whatever. Chess is the opposite because chess loses pieces as the game goes on. So there's an absence there, I guess. But the point is that there is a game for the players to read and traverse. And so I'm saying that because that is, for me, the legitimate the ways in which you can have legit I can have legitimate knowledge because it refers to an actually existing system or structure that the players can then trust read and traverse and hopefully that's that's fun you know I don't know so for example uh, I mean today I'm gonna be looking I'm gonna be expanding on this exploration game and looking at some other games but well, I'll just describe just now what uh, it does. So, actually, I'll, uh, I'll get a map up. Hold it up for a minute. Okay, whilst my image editor loads, um, 
So I, I began by saying that there's a problem in travel. Uh, problems aren't bad things. They're challenges, you know, an uh, intellectual problem or a scientific problem or whatever, social problem. Well, those are bad. But, you know, it's a question. And so with travel, it's always, I find there's a, Dungeon Master, you know, has from the outset two naive options. The first one is, um, the first option is that you just fast travel to the location because the players have decided to go somewhere and that is where the adventure is at. That's where everybody wants to spend their time in the session. And so you just go there and then you, and this, this is good for one shots and for pre-scripted adventures um, or where a group is only playing for a finite amount of time aka one shot um, but if you're like me and you just sort of play open-ended campaign based D&D &D, uh, then you know or you have a party who's on the move aka traveling you know uh, but Regardless, um, travel is travel is um, a problem, and there are other problems in the dungeon masters have to deal with. The and you know, I suppose you could even make a list of what those problems are with all of the different tabs I have down here. So I mean, scores and skills are a problem. Right, that's one of the things that players need to know. Basically, what their scores are, what they're able to do, what their agency is. Um, and what their hit points are. Uh, what they have in their inventory is another problem. Knowing how much it weighs, what they keep it in, what those things do how much of a certain class of item you have. Um, and travel is a problem, but so is, you know, the people that you meet. So is, how do I get things done in the world without having to directly do it on a one-to-one -one scale? Like, what if I want to send a group of travelers, adventurers, an agent, an assassin, uh, a witch, you know, to curse, to murder, to adventure? Um, and I want them to do something. And how would I, how would, how would that happen? And, and it be legitimate. Um, how do you buy and sell things? You know, the market, the market mechanism. Um, uh, magic, casting magic. What does my spell do? How much does it cost? Uh, and finally, you know, who am I? What does my character want to achieve? Where do they come from? Who do they know? Something, something, Cotton Eye Joe. So you have all of these problems. But today we're going to look at the exploration one to start with. So my answer to this problem is... Uh, I'm not going to assume there's a mic because I haven't really... That's more just pasted on just now. But every journey, you know, has two immediate questions that you're going to want your players to consider. I mean, what's the distance? How far is the journey? And what is their means of travel? Because, you know, walking a long way, walking a short way, riding horses a long way, these are all different adventures, right? So distances and so I've got two calculators here uh, that players can use you have the problem of distance first okay so the way that I answer this question is the calculator up here takes in XY coordinates for the journey we want to make so let's say we want to go from where this Quetzalcoatl 
Okay, it's clearly grub. Two points on the map, and that's five seven one two two three eight. So we put in five seven one two three eight, and then it's pretty much a straight line. So it has a curve of one, and then what the calculator does is finds out the hypotenuse using Pythagoras theorem, and then it divides that by four to scale to my map to my world, and it spits out the number of miles that you're going to travel. Um, once you know that, you can figure out how long your journey is going to take. So, actually, that's something I don't have here. So, I'll just put that in. Mm. I mean, I suppose, but okay. So if we put in about mm. Okay, well, anyway, so it can figure out the journey will take about two days. Um, Okay, that works. So it would take about two days to walk at uh, this pace. Oh, sorry, miles max. Yeah, I guess, I assume miles max, that's fine. So at full pace, two days hard walking. And um, So once you've got the that, you can go to the second calculator, um, in which you put this is your constitution score times two, that's your miles max, and then you put in the amount that you want to walk. And what it'll do is then calculate the fatigue that you're going to take on by walking that much in well, I assume ten hours. So if you go 100%, it gives you four fatigue. What does that mean? It means that your So that means, okay, wait, I just have to flush this, oops, okay, so, aha, uh -huh. okay, so we're for fatigue. fatigue is duplicated for food and water and so there's a total of an, uh, eight fatigue basically that um, Colonel Lillian the wizard would take on and what that means is if we do that look all their scores collapse they can't do anything still quite smart but otherwise completely socially impotent etc and if we go even further Death awaits, you know. Um, 
So what they have to do is then satisfy the input by saying, okay, well, I have no food or water, but the group has this much, so I can take from that, and then somebody else has to delete that from their inventory here. You see? So doing this adds food portions, etc., into the the machine. Oh, hello David. Thank you for joining me. Um, I started a little bit earlier because I just find myself tinkering uh, anyway. So I thought, save it for the screen or bring the screen to me. So I've just been whittling away here. And yeah, just about getting up to the point of explaining um, the part that I'm going to be working on today. Um, which is the travel game. So once we have the amount of miles that we our group needs to go, and the group is decided based on the slowest person how many miles they're going to walk, each individual has fatigue which they need to satisfy through uh, their inventory, or else gain fatigue and thus their scores go down by the same amount. So the narrative version of this is that you are traveling and you go, you walk 20 miles in 10 hours and you get tired and you are hungry and thirsty, basically. But if you are walking not very far, you might not gain as much fatigue. And so then what you can do is spend your energy in other ways. And that's what uh, this machine is here. This is uh, basically Yahtzee, which I've quoted in um, which I basically quoted in my game. And what I wanted was a way that players would, you know, play Yahtzee and feel compelled. Because Yahtzee is a really fun game. And when you get Yahtzee, it's like, yes. But you're going for numeric points in Yahtzee, where three of the kind, four of the kind... Where three of a kind, four of a kind... Um, are calculated, are scored. Sorry, I'll just turn my volume up a wee bit. Let me know if that is better. Um, yeah, my streaming quality has been pretty bad when I'm not getting anybody watching me because I don't know, don't really know how to do the stream thing. But if we have a look here at the um, score table here, excellent. Have a look down here. Is it okay if I, I could play some music? Bag of chips. Um, <laughs> what is it? What she does in the uh, drag to Navi? Um, uh, yeah, I'd like to. Can I play some music? Is that allowed? Um, yeah, I think so. Should be good. Now, nah, well, I like the silence. It's productive. Um, so, yeah, I'm just here because my DM prep, and I'm sort of like, the project's ain't quite complicated, and there's no way that I can continue it without having a sounding board. So, here we are. Um, so basically, I think my scores are pretty bad here, you know, because in Yahtzee you have the numerical score. Uh, oh, that's fine, isn't it? Okay, cool. And, uh, something, something, oh, oh. Don't want that. Hmm. Um, oh, I 
this always happens. Uh, so I'm just, you know, thinking out loud, basically. Um, David, I'll just demonstrate how this works. Uh, oh, move my face. So when you add, say, you roll five dice, and that's what you do when you hit reset. And it gives you five random dice. And then what you do is you choose which dice you want to keep. And then you roll again. And then regular Yahtzee, um, you get three rolls in total. The first one and then two re-rolls. But in my version, you can roll as many times as you like. But every time you re-roll, the first one's free, you gain one fatigue. And this is actually automatically added up. So one plus one. And we've got three. Interesting. Why would that be the case? It should just be two. So, what's that? J5 plus N9 minus N3. Yeah. Should be yeah, N9, J5. N9 and J5. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, it's running up. That's why. Yeah, so that's a, a, an element where I've actually put into the code um, a little bit of difficulty because I round up all of the decimals. I've told it to round up all the decimals. So if it's not sure, it always goes up here, hungrier rather than less hungry. So th that's, like I was saying at the start to myself, that's legitimate, I guess. So you got three, um, and the point is, is that you can re-roll and try and get hands. So let's play the game. So you hit roll, and what have we got? We got three ones and a three of the kind. So we can lock that again, and then roll again, and again, and again. And you see our fatigue is climbing. Oh, but we got a full house. That's cool. And then, as you can see, we now have to satisfy, at the end of the day, to Dungeon Master, if we've got the right amount of food and water to do that. And then we can do this. So, this is like a, in, in British pubs, um, there's something called a bandit machine. I wonder if it's in America. Yeah. But they're quite elaborate in the old British pubs. Yeah, here's one. So, you know, it's... You put the coins in. Yeah, here we go. I don't know if you get quite the same type. In the UK, uh, in the US, but basically, the bandit machine is a single standing board game essentially, where you pay coins to, uh, and everyone's different. So, is it going to show us how to play? Yeah, look at this.
Yeah, so I got no clue what's going on here, but basically it's making sounds, it's bright, it's the lights are drawing your attention to things that are relevant. So even though it's a very this I guess complex and overwhelming thing to take in on its own, the lights, you know, create this sort of like attract your attention and stuff. That's right, but the thing about these British bandit machines is that it's not just a, a slot machine, it's um Um it's the thing about the UK ones is that I, I've never seen two which are the same, you know. If you go into different pubs, they've got different bandits, you know. Um, and I've never really seen that sort of, like, theme thing, although I, I guess I'll find out. But um, So basically, that's kind of what we got going on here. That's what was an inspiration anyway. So if we roll and try and get something... Yeah, so then it's like ding 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 ding, you know, down here. Um, and then yeah, it diverts your eyes, but right now it just doesn't look sexy enough. You know, it's not like our video anyway. So I've sort of been looking at it here. I now have figured out the formulas to um have these light up, the conditional formatting, which is here, and they're all different because you're looking for different criteria. Um, on the top board, simply sum if, uh, so sum if the dice, this range, uh, actually, oh, I see that it's not actually visible on my thing. There we go. And actually, I'm going to zoom in. I can do that, right? No. No. Just working out how to run a live show here. Okay, so, um, and I can actually zoom. Zoom in. No. Normally I can. Ah, here it is. Perfect. Okay, so yeah, here. So in the top board, the scores in Yahtzee are adult ones, adult twos, adult threes. When in your final hand you have, uh, you're able to add those up. And generally in normal Yahtzee, to get what's called the top bonus where you get an additional 36 points or something, you need to get a certain number of points, which on average is three or uh, ones plus three twos plus three threes plus three fours, etc. Uh, but it's not required because you could get, for example, only two threes, but then you get four sixes and you score them there and that balances it out. So you can still save the date. But I had to come up with something different here. So with the text column, we have sort of instructions and so with the top one I went for um, with the top one I went for um, what would you call those like negative rules so things that you have to accomplish or else things you have to accomplish or else and so I've got in the subject column there, equipment, disease, navigation, shelter, food, water. You don't want to be without any of these things. Um, and so you have to attend to these things at some point in your travels. Gaining fatigue, but hopefully not losing out. 
So I need to develop this more because right now there's a couple of things I can think to do off the top of my head. And that's um, we need a way so that this is also pooled with the group. Just like in scores and skills, um, food and water. In scores and skills, food and water here, you have this um, group number, which is the sum total of all of the players, food and water minus your own, so it creates everybody else's. And that's taken into our switchboard here. Um, basically, you make known in the switchboard your food and water, and then it gets to group food by back. So I need something like that but for the travel. I need something like that but for the travel and um, because players need to know uh, that they've got everything covered. Because uh, this also has the added element that the more people you travel with, the safer it is because more people can score on these. Whereas if you're traveling on your own, you need to put in a lot more effort to deal with all of these things. Um, and so there's a process here that I need to inscribe into the, the script. And I'm just going to make a note of it because that process is that um, you... Players need a way to say what they scored. I don't have that just now, and I think it's lacking from the game. So we need to be in, input the scored, and that needs to come through on my. The output there has to come through on my dungeon master screen. But then it needs where it's sort of sourced, pulled together. But then it needs to then be exported back to the individual character sheets where I can then have a helper cell, true or false, which will give the conditional formatting effect here with the green, but it will do that if somebody else has scored something. And, you know, that's, you know, basically me going, I mean, it's super official. I could run it manually, but at this point, that would be very tedious, I think. If I could get it so that that happens. Because what it does is it, it fixes the co-presence problem. Because right now I'm having this issue where these complex character sheets risk uh, alienating players into their own games and not necessarily being a group effort, which has to be socially communicated because problems which have to be solved socially is pretty much how you have the role-playing experience because people have to do that sh stuff in character right so if you have everybody just playing bandit machines you know they don't even really talk to each other really unless and so that's what I need to be working on um so the first thing to do is to have a way for people to basically score on this um, and so yeah what mm, we need a drop down and a confirm I think that or a button mm, Right, I'm going to need to reduce this. Seems hard because when you put on more rules, it could limit some of that emergence, although limits are also necessary for play. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, totally. I mean, playful constraints. And um, players are, by trying to break, yeah, sometimes I think they're trying to break the game intentionally, but they're not. They're just flexing, right? They're using the thing to do something and it can't be brittle, it has to be able to work. Um, 
And so that's why this whole thing is based around Yahtzee so much, because I know that Yahtzee works and I know it's a fun game. And the other thing is, is that I said at the start that DMs have two options when groups are traveling somewhere. And the first option, fast travel. The second option is to move through that traveled space as if it were the destination you want to end up at. And the problem with the first one is that fast by fast traveling, you will deprive the group of the positive team building effects that travel and time passing together has, in which the stakes are lower, but there's still things to do. That's a big way in which training, uh, it's a big way in which people bond. But the second one in which you go through it and, you know, every week you're like you're in a new place and here's the locals and there's an adventure hook and stuff, then it ends up, you know, you're, the players are going from A to B because of their intentionality. They've decided to make that journey. But during the course of the travel, the dungeon master might, by treating every place as a place, bog the players down. They're no longer doing A to B. There's C, D, E, ad infinitum you know, here. And so you need a something in the middle, something that doesn't deprive away from the A to B. There would be no Canterbury Tales of Fast Travel, exactly. You need those chronicles, those stories told over time. Um, and so you need something on the fence in the middle. And that's what I'm trying to do here by taking Yahtzee, which is fun, fast paced, and based on risk, taking risks and leveraging the right risks and rewards in a way that um, is compelling but not time consuming and does not deprive from the main plot but actually strengthens it and so um, and so that's the concept here now the first thing I need to do is find a, a way in which they can input scores. So um, we're just going to have to we'll put two rows down here. And do I want more buttons? Uh, I don't know if I want more buttons. So let's go for this and we will oh, yeah, we'll just go down to make it a little bit bigger than that. Okay. And then where's our zoom? Hundred percent. Cool. So score into down here. First thing to do, we don't want that. We don't want that. We want to merge and fill and border our input. But I sort of have a rule. You want to keep it white so the players know that the white space, that's where they should be inputting stuff. Um, so there we have it. Now, this is going to be a drop down. This is going to be a drop down of all of the, basically all of the available hands that can be inputted. Or, I don't know, I suppose I can trust my players. What would be cool is if it was just a drop down with all the option and a button that does nothing. Because the real reason I'm putting this in is because um, I feel like players aren't, they don't have that thing to do at the end of this process. Um, but no, I, I do need to output uh, the thing to the screen. So okay, can you have a drop down with options from two different locations? Because that would be very easy. I don't think you can. I don't think you can. Yeah, you cannot, cannot do that. 
And I don't want to have two places. Yeah, why is, why is this not working? Should be a drop down here. Oh no. This, is this how you do a drop down? Yeah. List from a range. Show drop down less than cell. There we go. Yep. So if I did, however, what I could do is I could make all of this one, one score sheet. That would be the thing to do, wouldn't it? So let's just see if this works because there's a lot of stuff that could go wrong. Just do this. And if we, well, I mean, do that. That should work. Um, okay. All right. Let's see what's this is. This could be messy. Conditional formatting could be really messy now. Um, I think I just swallowed a bit of the plastic off the end of that pen. <clears throat> Um, yeah, we're getting really messy now. Mm. How many? Oh. Hmm. Let's try copy pasting in a different way. Let's just try doing this. Um, hopefully, there we go. It's not far, uh, effed up now. So um, let's take this to here. To here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, still good. What we're gonna do is just copy and paste. These, delete those. Um, mm -hmm. um, okay, so this all in aid of having a input for um, players to score with and. Um, I wanted to be able to do that now. Input score. Um, okay. Now I'm wondering if we can, no, can't, can't do that because the JavaScript, the JavaScript will f up. So input score, but basically now when we do this, right, we can put the data validation for the drop down, and we can do that, and then it'll have all of the options. We can put those in. And then I can record that <clears throat> on the other side. Just need to fix this now. So let's see what happens. Let's roll. Okay, so that, that's good. That means that it's probably worked. Yeah, good. Okay, so now we've got that going. We need a way to... So on 100%. Currently, it's too big. No, we can't really do anything about that. Um, I mean, we haven't really changed it from how it was before, so. Uh, but we can probably cut that off. 
no uh, subject yeah so we can get rid of this uh, true false false or false um so what i want to do is so we could do something like this for example it's simple but it works um, and we can hide all of this essentially so that our bandit sort of has that illusion now um, so we roll again you see things disappear we roll again Mm -hmm. and then these will come up but that's also ugly so don't want it sorry um, well, what the well, one thing I could do is just sort of like do that and sort of make everything teeny bit smaller because that won't F with the code um, And up here we can make this smaller. Uh, yeah, make this smaller. But we also want this to be bigger. And this is ugly. So we're gonna want to just turn that back white just there. Black and oh, black. And think about that. So, so we got our input score, and we're going to go on to the DM screen. But before that, I just want to make sure that this is not. Um, so, we're probably going to have to make these rows bigger. That's fine. We can do that. Make mm, that bigger. Okay, so if I turn all of these into true false statements, I can have a color code there. Mm. Um, I could have a verification helper cell that basically will evaluate based on these whether or not this is true. Um, I suppose. But I, I, that sounds like a lot of effort, so I want to simplify it. And the best way to do that is to have things not show up in a drop down at all. And the way to do that is to change these. Uh, okay, so the subject. Here's what we'll do. Subject. So positive affirmative statements here we're gonna put for example with equipment you take time take time to take time to check equipment because you don't want that going off there may be times where you're climbing a cliff or something and you didn't you know check equipment and then we'll have a way for that to come up um take precautions against disease double check uh, navigation um, seek out nearby shelter forage or hunt for food mm. seek out clean water source Um, 
three of a kind. So this is where, okay, so now the point is, is that if we go to data validation and change B to D here, now the player has basically a list of choices and they have to click, right? They have to click that choice. And that's good. That's, that's like the bandit machine we were looking at. So three of a kind. Yeah, we want true statements here. So we're just going to go have a look here and see. Grab that. Put that there. And for here, for example, we're going to do the same thing. Grab that. Because it's already the right thing. Pop it in there. Uh, let's see. Okay. And mm, hold on, though. No. Yeah, we haven't really got the this working yet. So we're just gonna put um right here. I'm going to take all of these and pop them in here's I mean oh yeah this probably become unrecognizable from Yahtzee you know in terms of the names of the hands and things a complete reskin eventually so this will be our control we'll see if this method works because it'll come up true now it has not it has not come up true uh yeah so but it's not important because i should be able to just do this okay cool but um, yeah and then if i do this Oh no, it works. Okay. So now we're again somewhere. Now it's, it's really moving along here. So the input, mm, we don't really need that, do we? But we can, mm, these numbers now, we can shave those off somehow. And also here, so D to D, but we only want, like, we only want, we want F. Otherwise, that's what we want. So, What do I want to do least? Retype out this, or yeah, I'll do that. So now this general formula, pop it down there. That should only. Uh... Oh, I should. This should have. Yeah. What's this now? What's this? Why is this happening? E17, B17. Right, okay, cool. Well, we're just going to do it in that. No, we're going to do that. Please work. Mm, it's not work. B17. You should add down here with E17 equals three times. B17, yeah, that's good, what if I do this, that work, this is not,
one of us just takes a second to no, that that one works. So where's my full high score not working? Oh no, five's not working. Let's reset. Give me some fives. Only fives in the fatigue. Oh look, it works. Okay, cool. So yes. Mm, we just pop in my nice borders here again. So Let's do this. Let's go another conditional formatting, which will take precedence over these. And it is custom formula is C17. No. So we always want C, but we're going down in a row. So we're going to have the dollar sign, which anchors it to C. We don't want it to go for 17 because we want a relative thing there. So C17 um, basically equals false. And then what will happen is we want the text to go white. And done. At the top. Something equals no, doesn't want to. Mm. Now, well, put it in red. C17 is false. Ah, I'm an idiot. An equal sign here. And maybe even take these off. Aha, here we go. Bingo. Um, so now um we can get rid of these. <laughs> Hurrah! Excellent. So we've got that sort of effect now where if we um if we roll Nothing's going to come up, but it will basically score for us. It will come up with what we need. Here we go. Small straight. Take that. Take that. And uh, yep. So what we should do is if we just put the background here to black. Oh. None. Then we can see and edit it, and we can turn it back to white when we want to play. So, <clears throat> this input really should be. We could move that there, 
if we just put instead of equals if we put in another relative in the a1 we do that and then it should just have the same effect and then what we can do is we can um, we can Now, what's going on here? Ah, well, we delete something here. Ah, but this one here, that's fine because what we can do is that. Bring it down to here. Now, that, I don't like the look of that at all. That's disgusting. That looks like spiders to me. That looks like a big group of spiders. I don't like it. So, what we need to do is fix that. And that's because we need to go back now. Have a look here and B seventy blah 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 whole thing. Ah, uh, because it's comparing these. So if where we have the B, yeah, okay. So here, where we have the B, no, the ref, okay, so that's just basically 3, 6, I can't, I can't really, one sec, times 3, so what we just do here is we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then we can probably do that here. No. It's false. Why is this true? Equals row A5, which is oh, okay. Yeah. So what I can just do is uh, we just place that with. Do that. Mm. Some if any of these are one, and that's one, yeah, that's right. And if we put in here two, that's also correct. Well, let's see. Yeah, two ones, and that's given two there. Okay, cool. So we can just replace these. Manually, it's not that many. Uh, however, it's still coming up with zero. We don't want that. Why? Oh, because these are still operating off of. Right, yeah. So the formula here will be B17 is 3 times B17, which is always true. If you have zero, right? So what we want to do is go to this one, say, and just manually put in 3 times 1. Okay, here, this one's going to be 3 times 2. This one's going to be, oh, no. Um, wrong way. Mm, that sucks. I really just scotch taped that one on before. This is a minefield of uh, stuff here. Um, so 
So we got that, but the reason, the problem with the colors is that um, all of these are grouped under one rule. Which is... So... We just got a... We just got a, you know, go through it as a fine comb, unfortunately. So this one's just going to be for B2, B2, and this one's going to be three times one. Okay, there we go. And then what we're going to do is copy that, actually. Mm. Or I could just do this. And then now here, three times a seventeen. Okay. Let's try and get another one. Okay, we got three ones. So why is this not working? B seventeen greater than or equal to three times a seventeen, which is one. Because this doesn't apply to a seventeen. That's what there should be an a. What we need. Mm -hmm. No. A seventeen greater three times. Ah, uh, well, no. This should be b seventeen. Or, mm, yeah, what's going on? Oh, that's what's going on. The, the the ordering here. Go make sure that, you know, this is a layer. So, um, that's fine. Now, why isn't this? Because these aren't. Right. Bolton. So equals B T and that's okay. Okay. Uh, just respond to an if error. Anyway, that would be. Oh well, we can just put in our A17, can we? There we go. Okay, cool. So now, we're good. Now we're good. To recap, oh. Well, I might have discovered a little So what we're saying is B17 equals 1 times 4 to the end of blah blah blah. But it should be 5 for Yahtzee. All 5. So all these 4s have to become 5. And all that's doing is an OR statement where if any of the if... Ooh, actually, this should be an... Mm, no, no, no. Or any of these are the number times five. This would be a yes in one of the boxes, which is that box. Okay, so we're getting there. We are getting there. Um, we don't want. Yes, we do. We want all of that. The range here. Um. So why is that black? Because I've yeah, because I've done that. That'll be why. Yeah. Okay, so I think we are here finally, and the white though definitely should start to see. Okay, for now. Um. Okay, so we're getting there. 
I still think it's a bit awkward the sizing and position proportions. Maybe Yahtzee could be vertical. That could be something. Um, that would require a lot of code to be changed. But it could be a more elegant use of the space. Um, so, you know, if I just took that, then everything would have to be swapped around. Tee -hee. So, in our script editor. Let's have a look just before I. Uh, okay, so it's not that one. That is particularly irritating piece of code. We have. Where's our Yahtzee? Oh, yeah, it looks like this is it. Whole color, whole color, whole color. Mm hmm. And then what's this? Is that it? Maybe we do all hold it all together. Anyway. But for now, this is what we got. Uh, what we could do is try and fill, well, create more content to fill this part with, I guess. Um, so one thing I would like to do just now, though, is just complete our plan. So if we go to our Dungeon Master page, basically what we need now is a way to input this. Now on the switchboard, let's put in, uh, we're going to need, we're going to need, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so we're going to need to quantify it, and so if we go into this one, Trillillion, Dongri, this is like a smart switchboard, I guess, that I use for things. Um, Lily and Don Green, what's the other cunt's name? Um, Sir no. Okay, and so this allows me to play with certain parts of the data, and what we could do here. Yeah, let's do this. So. Do that, put it here. Now, the cell that we want to take from is in the exploration and it's G17 for now. And here we have it, basically. Um, uh, we moved down. These will come up as errors, I hope. Should we come up with, yeah, good. Through the kind, okay. So yeah. And then, what I need then is for a way to export that back out. So to this guy, oh yeah, I was gonna, okay, got some more stuff to do here, what is this? Take time to check equipment. Take precautions. 
advanced disease. Um, what is this one? Ah, yeah. CK. Uh -huh, and then this stuff, I don't know. I feel like, you know, we could just do this. Mm, but yeah, because we want it to appear or disappear based on nothing in there. So let's try and get something then. Um, yeah, mm, let's try and get one, we got one, five, three. Let's try and get straight. Here we go. One, two, three, five is not straight. Give me that six. Or four, rather. So what's happened here? We've got a large straight, which is both of these. Why is this like that? Because. We do that. Why is this like that though? Oh, yeah, so I mean, what we could do is just reboot these two true. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Right, so this probably can't be true. It should not be doing that. Starting on eighteen. God Zooks. So 
the vote was if I do this, these are green too. So there's something wrong with this here. Oh, it's always going to be true. Yeah, so. You know what, I really hate how the conditional formatting box is so small. Oh David, yes. I'll see you later. Don't know when you sent that, they already be gone. Um One times three, two times two times three, three times three, four times three, five times three, six times three. Okay, done. Okay. Um, so what we can also do. Let's get rid of that. Shit. And we can uh, do this. Okay, so what we also want to happen is that. Um, Move that down and add another rule, which is a custom formula J seventeen equals D seventeen. And we want that to fill That. Move that to the top. What well, basically what we want, yeah. Okay, so mm. action. We want actions. 
Tony. Yes. Um, so that kind of works. The color is a bit effed up though. So let's change that to and yep. and yes. So we want all these green ones. To basically be boring old black. See how fast I can do it. Oh, I'm putting this under pressure now. Um, but we only want. There we go. So now um we got that. But I really want to get rid of these scores now. Oh, that may be good. Yes, I can get rid of that. Make it a little smaller. Uh, okay, so now, um, now we've got this. No, we don't want that. These are all help yourselves. Mm -hmm. So we kind of ironed that out a wee bit. Three, four, we got small straight, that's cool. So it pops up. 
what you're able to do, you can change that. Now, what we want to do is when we hit reset, empty this square. So we're just going to go to reset button. And then we're going to, yeah, let's write that into a place. <clears throat> it's funny, no noise coming through from the Band of Machine video. Which is a shame, because it makes all kinds of interesting noises. Try and get that fixed for next time. Um, no one reset. Yeah, I just want to change this one bit of code. No. Why? Why has that happened? One is not reset. Cool. Reset button. Here we go. Here we go. Is down here. So when we hit the reset button, all this stuff happens. Um, yeah, and so find something like here. So which tell us that again j17 to l18 we can just put j17 something like that that should work so now when we hit reset now when we hit reset Bingo. Mm hmm. We can actually what we can do with this. Yeah, let's we don't actually need any of this. So for now we can Oh my god. Okay, it looks kind of ugly just now at the bottom here, but um, that's okay.
Oh, what if I did this? Okay, cool. Okay. Get this gray, tasteful gray. Oh no, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Aha. Okay, so
cool. No, three of a kind. Or again, small straight. Yeah, it gets more miles. And then reset. One, two, three. And a four. Give me four. There we go. You see? And then you select it. Mm hmm. Possible action. Call it logic or helper, or whatever. Um, <coughs> drink some water. So these guys need, and then full house, sort of like, uh, ah, well, I have something for full house, actually, it's here. So, what we could do is just take that. Here, import range. Destiny also, destiny <clears throat> D8. Bloody ambulances, honestly. Error. Um, yeah. This has to be in quotation marks. Yeah. Mm. Don't need the error here. Yeah. Full house, C27 equals true. No, it's nothing. Destiny D8. So let's get a full house. Go ahead, pause. No, ones. All right, here we go. It came in good. So what we want is all right. Okay, that's cool. I just need to tie this to a button. Um, yeah, and 
and the way to do that is actually quite easy. I use the same burn and turns. Right, roll destiny, here it is. Uh, roll destiny two. D7. All right, perfect. So all we need to do is make another version of that. And we'll take this here. And make that an eight. And then here we just need to do that there. See. And so now what I've done is here where we do this. So yeah, and then when I do that, it's gonna lock on it. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. So their values, text values now, and that means this can stop changing for one. Hmm. And I make these a little bit bigger. Okay, that's good. I like that. I, li I love that actually. It's great. So, um, uh, now because we're hiding these, full house can't just be choose one because they're not visible. <laughs> so, um, but So the other thing though is yeah yeah it's a score. We have that coming in. No problem. The issue is then broadcasting that back out the switchboard. Let's see. Okay, so the idea, based on techniques I'm already using uh, for the food, for the water, etc., is then that Okay.
No, I don't like it. But I do quite like bringing up the board like that, but I don't need that. Um, Destiny table, maybe?
Okay, this is looking starting to look quite good actually. Mm, time to take a quick time to check equipment. What we could do is, uh, here we could put something like, uh, I have been um, focusing on, uh, I'm focusing on putting one foot in front of the other. Can you reset now? There we go! Sorry, you can't see that, but basically, yeah. So it's going okay. All right, cool. So, um, Ah, must it be? Okay, here we go. Let's find it. <sighs> so let's print a test. Let's print time. For food. Um, so then, we do a match.
Right, well, that's it. I'm going to talk to you guys. So I'll see you next time.